greatest weapon of all. First step in solving any problem is recognizing there is one. It's time you started to Pain isn't something we thought. All we could ever do for our heroes is remember them. And they gave up two lives. The one they were living in and the one they would have lived. They gave up everything for our country, for us. They pray for freedom and justice. Some veterans not getting the timely care that they need. Less than 1% of Americans serving in uniform. Good news is, is that in recent years, we've made historic investments to boost the VA budget. What is it? Why should we care? We should care about press freedom because... Because we were informed. In democratic societies, free, diverse, and pluralist media enable public debates and are essential checks You don't look power. satisfied. Let's discuss. Hey guys, uh, how's it going? Welcome to that, that podcast, uh, new episode. Uh, uh, beneficiary travel, if it's your first time listening, then uh, thanks for coming. The Beneficiary Travel Program provides eligible veterans and other beneficiaries mileage uh, reimbursement. Common carrier like plane, trains, bus, taxi, um, rail, and uh, so on. Or when, uh, or when medically indicated. Uh, special mode, ambulance, wheelchair, van, transport for travel to and from VA health care or VA authorized uh, non-VA health care for which the veteran is eligible. So veterans may apply for travel reimbursement by completing VA Form 10-3542. Who's eligible for beneficiary travel? So veterans with disabilities rated 30% or more travel for care relating to any condition. Veterans with disabilities rated less than 30% travel for care related to their service-connected conditions. Veterans receiving the de- Department of Veterans Affairs pension benefits travel for care of any condition. Veterans with annual income below the maximum uh, annual rate of pension travel for any care of any condition. Veterans who are unable to defray the cost of the travel. Veterans traveling in relation to a compensation and pension examination. Eligible veterans in certain situations related to obtaining service dogs. Certain veterans in limited emergency situations. Beneficiaries of other federal agencies when authorized by that agency. Allied beneficiaries when authorized to, by appropriate foreign government agency. Certain non-veterans when related to care of a veteran, like caregivers. Or medical um, attendees. So, are those included in special groups of veterans such as a spinal cord injured, uh, combat veteran, or catastrophic disabled automatically eligible for beneficiary travel? No. So, only veterans traveling in relation to VA authorized transplant care are automatically eligible for BT. All others must meet beneficiary travel eligibility requ- uh, criteria. So what types of travel can VA provide or reimburse for? VA has the authority to provide to eligible persons reimbursement for mileage driven in a private vehicle and transportation by common carrier public transportation. In addition, when medically justified by a VA uh, health care provider, special mode of transportation like ambulances may be approved for beneficiary travel for eligible veterans. Uh, what are the current uh, beneficiary travel mileage reimbursement rates? Why are rates different for veterans and VA employees? Because that's law. <laughs> the current mileage reimbursement rate is 41.5 cents per mile subject to appropriate deductibles. The mileage rates are different for VA and VA employees according to law. Can mileage reimburse or special mode transportation be withheld from a Beneficiary travel eligible veteran? Travel benefits may be withheld when it is clinically determined that travel allowance would be counterproductive to a veteran's care, treatment, or therapy being provided, and such determination is recorded in the patient's medical record. Why is deductible withheld from uh, beneficiary travel payments? What is the money withheld used for? VA is required by law to withhold certain amounts from the mileage reimbursement payments. 
The withheld money is available for travel payment of other veterans or medical care. So what are deductible amounts? Is the most deductible cap for each facility or it's, it is for travel to all VA facilities for healthcare? Who is exempt from the deductibles? Current deductibles are $3 per one-way trip and $6 round trip with a maximum deductible of $18 per calendar month or six one-way, three round trips, whichever occurs first. These are the totals for travel to all VA or authorized non-VA facilities within a month. The following individuals are exempt from these deductibles. Veterans traveling in conjunction with a CMP examination. Non-veterans, donors, caregivers, attendants. Veterans requiring a special mode of transportation. Veterans for whom VA determines the imposition of the deductible would cause a severe financial hardship. Can a waiver of the deductible be requested? Yes, they can. A waiver may be requested either orally or in writing when the deductible causes a severe financial hardship for a veteran. A severe financial hardship occurs when a veteran is in receipt of a VA pension, aid in attendance, and housebound benefits for 100% service connected. 100% service connected veterans or special monthly compensation are not considered a VA pension. A non-service connected veteran's income for the year prior to application or the projected income for the year of application does not exceed the appropriate VA pension level. A service connected veteran's income is at or below the VA's income limit for the year prior to the application or projected for the year of application. For more information about VA income limits, vis visit the VA income thresholds. VA will automatically grant the waiver without request from the veteran when it can determine a veteran qualifies for a waiver of the deductible. How is the need for special mode transportation determined? What eligibility requirements must be met? Special mode transportation includes ambulances, air ambulance, wheelchair vans, and other modes that are specially designed to transport certain disabled individuals. Special mode does not include public transportation such as a taxi, a bus, a subway, a train, airplane, or a privately owned vehicle with special adaptive equipment and or capable of transporting disabled persons. To be eligible for special mode transportation, two criteria must be met. The veteran has to first meet one or more beneficiary travel administrative eligibilities, see first question, and then a VA clinician must determine and document that a special mode of transportation is a medically required to transport the veteran in relation to VA or VA authorized health care. So can a veteran not eligible for uh, beneficiary travel but has a extenuating circumstances received for beneficiary travel? There is no authority to provide transportation through the beneficiary travel program for those who do not meet the eligibility requirements, except in cases of a VA organ transplant care. Is there anything VA can do to obtain travel for ineligible beneficiaries? Veterans who do not meet the beneficiary travel eligibility may qualify for other transportation resources, including the Disabled American Veterans Transportation Network, Veterans Transportation Services, and local, state, or other federal programs, VA will assist the veteran exploring available options. Does VA have authority to provide transportation for non-VA community care or visits when beneficiary travel eligible veteran chooses to use private health insurance to pay for care? VA has authority to pay for transportation of, be of beneficiary travel eligible veterans to a non-VA health care appointment only if care is being paid for by the VA. What if a veteran chooses to go to his uh, preferred facility instead of the closest VA facility that can provide the required care? Veterans have the choice to go to any VA facility they choose for care. However, travel care can only be paid to the nearest facility that can actually provide the needed care. If a veteran chooses to go to a facility other than the one closest to his or her home, he or she is responsible for any cost beyond that for transportation to the nearest facility, including mileage and special mode of transportation. The VA determines either for administrative or 
clinical reasons that a specific facility, including one that may be more distant, is appropriate place for care, then travel is paid to that facility. So how does DA determine distance for uh, beneficiary travel mileage reimbursement purposes? VA determines mileage using the shortest route by distance. VA uses the beneficiary travel dashboard, which includes door-to-door -door technology to determine distance and is required for use by VA facilities. Deviations are allowable when identified routes are imp impassable or documented as clinically inappropriate. What if a veteran has a PO, PO box and uh, physically lives elsewhere? Beneficiary travel is intended to assist veterans with tra transportation costs from their place of residence or other places they are staying, if not their permanent residence, to the closest VA or VA authorized healthcare facility that can provide the required care, treatment, or service. To determine appropriate travel reimbursement, the veteran must establish a place of residence or where travel started. A veteran may be asked to provide documentation establishing his or her address. Um, can VA provide transportation for veterans in emergency situations? Yes. VA can provide travel in certain emergency situations. Transport from a VA facility to a community facility for emergency treatment if a veteran develops an emergency while receiving care at the VA facility and the facility cannot provide the needed care. Transport to a community provider and back to the VA facility can be provided at the VA's expense, regardless of the veteran's beneficiary travel eligibility when the non-VA care is approved for VA payment. Transport from any point other than a VA facility to a community facility for emergency treatment. If the emergency episode of care at the non-VA facility is approved for VA payment, then transport transport from the point of emergency to the non-VA facility can be approved for VA payment. However, once medically stabilized at the community provider, the veteran must meet the beneficiary travel and medical eligibility criteria to get paid. Um, is VA required to pay for lodging and meals associated with VA travel? VA may provide reimbursement for the actual cost up to 50% of the local government employee rate for meals and or lodging when appropriate and upon presentation of receipts. The need for lodging and or meals is determined on a case-by-case -case basis and is based on the veteran's medical condition, distance required to travel, and any other extin extenuating circumstances. Such items should generally be requested and authorized in advance of travel, however, Certain unusual circumstances may allow for approval after travel has occurred. Reimbursement is not provided solely because the veteran chooses to stop or take less direct route to a VA or VA authorized care. Does VA have authority to pay ferry fares, bridge, road and tunnel tolls, luggage fares or parking associated with VA travel? Reimbursement for these or other accessories of travel may be provided on presentation of appropriate receipts. Prior to travel, individuals traveling at VA expense should be aware of items that may be reimbursed, any travel restrictions such as the amount of luggage authorized and the need to provide receipts to obtain reimbursement. Reimbursement is determined on a case-by-case -case basis on individuals' needs and condition of the beneficiary. Um. So how will the beneficiary, uh, beneficiary uh, travel payment be determined if a veteran changes residence while undergoing VA health care, especially if he or she is in, an inpatient? Payment for the return trip will be for the distance mileage to the veteran's new residence. However, payment may not exceed the amount that would be allowed from the facility where the care or service could have been provided that is nearest to the new residence. So for example, if during the period of care or service in Baltimore, a beneficiary changed his or her address to Detroit, payment for the return trip would be limited to that allowed for traveling to the new residence from the nearest facility to the newest residence in Detroit, where the care or services could have been provided. So how long do beneficiaries have uh, to submit a claim uh, for travel reimbursement? 
Claims for travel reimbursement or payment must be filed in accordance with the following guidelines. Mileage reimbursement application either in person or in writing must occur within 30 calendar days after the travel. Special mode of transportation except in cases of emergency should be approved and arranged in advance of travel. Emergency transportation, VA should be notified as soon as possible but no later than 30 days from the date of travel when special mode transportation not authorized by the VA prior to travel to a non-VA facility occurs. Change in beneficiary travel eligibility. If a person becomes eligible for beneficiary travel after the travel takes place, payment may be made if the person applies for travel benefits within the 30 days of the date when the person became eligible for benefits. The date of an application for beneficiary travel is the postmark date if mailed or the date of submission if hand-delivered or requested verbally. Um, are veterans who travel together entitled to beneficiary travel reimbursement? What about the veterans who take the DAV system or other free transportation? To collect travel benefits for transportation to VA care or treatment, a veteran or other eligibility eligible beneficiary must actually, actually incur an expense. Should one or more veteran travel together in a private vehicle, only the owner of the vehicle is actually incurring ex expense and is the only person who may obtain travel reimbursement. However, when multiple veterans share a vehicle where passengers must pay for their transport, such as a taxi, or when one veteran pays another veteran for transport, then all are eligible to travel reimbursement at either the mileage reimbursement rate or actual expense, whichever is less. Such person must provide a receipt to indicate an incurred expense to receive reimbursement. Veterans who take no pay transportation such as DAV transportation, VA VTS, or other no cost city or state transportation are only eligible for reimbursement for any travel to and from their residence to the point of pickup or drop off as they are not otherwise incurring an expense. Yeah, that's uh, pretty much it, guys. And I guess the main point, so once you have a VA appointment somewhere, uh, once you arrive to VA and you pass through the front desk, you fill up a travel reimbursement form and then you're done. So most of the time your travel uh, is reimbursed. Yeah. Like, of course, if you meet uh, those eligible conditions. Um, and that's it. Uh, do you have any great movie uh, stuff yeah. to do a book to recommend? Yeah, so I read a book called Max Out uh, Your Life by uh, Ed Milet. It's not a bad book, really a positive guy. And so if you guys need a little bit of direction or something like that, it's not a bad book. As uh, always, guys, a damn quote or words of uh, wisdom of the day. Live with no excuses and travel with no regrets. Said by Oscar Wilde. So that's it, guys. Uh, thanks for listening. Until next time, over and out. Thank you.